Hello, one and all, and welcome to the 154th episode of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast, recorded on August 30th, 2021. My name is Lucas DeWriter, and I saw the most Karen shit I have ever seen out in the wild today. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. That sounds fun. So, I think they're working on a water line that runs under my street, uh, so they've been working their way down it all week uh finally got to my in front of my building today and at about 8 a.m just as they're about about to start construction like materials are rolling in this woman pulls out of our building's underground parking lot and like yeah there there's construction equipment and stuff blocking her way and then she does not react appropriately to that at all. She starts yelling at the workers, screaming at them, saying shit like, you, you gotta move this fucking truck. I gotta get my kids to fucking school. And like, fucking hell, her kid, she is behaving like that with her kids there. And <laughs> like, there's nothing they can do. Like, this is like double long, like larger than a car vehicles on an LA back street like there's no there, there's no going off to the side with that really not well so I the situation just evolves and then she just starts laying on the horn for like a solid three or four minutes until eventually they're like okay I guess we're going to back up this not quite a dump truck but like those trucks that just have like a dumpster on the back of it for like rubble and shit we're going to back that out into a four-way intersection, which is super illegal, but okay, nothing else we can do here. Yeah. It was bizarre. Damn, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't really know what you do. I mean, obviously you don't do that. I don't no. know what you do if, like, you just are trying to leave and there's a large vehicle parked in front of where you live and you can't get out. Yeah. Yeah. I feel, feel like someone probably should have planned for that. I but I think I think yeah. that was a part of it. I think she knew she fucked up because they had stopped the construction like right before the exit to my building's parking lot on Friday. So the entire weekend, if you left, you could tell, oh, this is going to be in front of us tomorrow. Like, better get yeah. out early. And she did not. Like, I just got a last second notice an hour ago that was like hey everyone tomorrow morning uh starting at 7 30 a.m you can't park in the garage like you're just straight up done uh they're painting it so i yeah quickly jumped in my car and parked on the street so oh, ooh. It, it wouldn't shock me if it's the same situation where the apartment management company was just like hey park you know there's gonna be construction yeah park your car out on the street tonight like and people were like Bad. yeah cool and then this one lady didn't do it <laughs> i'm sure I, i'll be fine <laughs> <laughs> i didn't see a notice or anything but like i could just existing in this building like i realized this was going to happen and i don't oh she lived in your building yes yeah uh, mm-hmm. i got the vibe that she was in a different one i might I, have misheard yeah no nah, that's cool. fair also on the podcast today we have Ryan Holt, a man who went on a 11 mile lime scooter ride over the weekend, but at what cost? Uh, $46. <laughs> Jesus. It has a very quantifiable cost, and it is $46. It's uh, for, the, for the price of a one way ticket to Denver on Frontier Airlines. <laughs> I. I rode a scooter around for a while. <laughs> how do you, how do you have cool. that in the back of your? Oh wait, no, you said you're. I'm doing heading, a I'm heading out to Denver that, yeah. soon, and yeah, the round trip was like 88 bucks. So <laughs> assuming that the one way is similar, that's um, yeah, that's how it's going. That was fun though. That was fun being my Mick. I appreciated it. Yeah, got some good videos out of it. And I realized that like Mick is a slur. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we're just like saying it a lot (laughs) on the street in public i don't well and i'm sure they hopefully get the reference but Mm -hmm. okay (laughs) you don't 
It you, sounds like I'm just saying I'm your Irishman like a lot. <laughs> I mean, I think they knew we were doing a Rocky thing, but also like against Irish people, and you know I'm sure it has a terrible history, but like okay, okay, fair. Yeah, definitely not a great history. Mm. That much I can guarantee. So. Uh, also on the podcast today, we have a man who narrowly escaped some potentially dangerous well water, but maybe not by the last couple of minutes. Um, uh, no, I survived the well water and was nearly felled by a cup of root beer from Culver's. <laughs> I watched that go down. <laughs> Just play by play. Yep. Uh, hiccuped while drinking root beer through a straw and sucked it all down into my lungs. So there's now, on top of the, uh, the COVID, uh, yeah. liquid that's the in COVID my lungs. The COVID scarring. There yeah. is actual scarring right yeah. now. Yeah, like on, on top of that, there's just a little, little splish splosh of root beer going around. God damn. Oh, but no. Straws fucking suck. Um, Everyone needs to ditch straws. Ooh. Yeah. If you just get, drink. We 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 were we didn't evolve to drink through a fucking straw. Like in a car, I get it. Like anywhere else, come on now. Have you, you guys drink. have you guys seen the video of the guy doing like a first time tasting boba review in his car? <laughs> and like the second, <laughs> second after he takes a sip out of the straw, he spits it out onto his shirt and is just like, "Oh my god, I choked on something." <laughs> What's happening? Oh my God. <laughs> didn't, didn't have any idea that's didn't what, know what boba is. No. So tapioca <laughs> pudding in there. No. Good God. It's amazing. Um, but no, I did not uh, get sick from any spring water mm-hmm. because I am un- indestructible. Yeah. As you can see by my current physical condition. <laughs> How was camping? Camping was fun. It was really fucking hot on a Saturday. Like, Jesus Christ. It had rained and stormed there for, like, two days straight, so everything was soaking wet. So starting a fire was hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on top of that, it was so humid that if you just, like, had stuff, it would get wet from the humidity. Like, um... I, you know, we got our firewood, we set up the fire, uh, I knew it was going to be hard lighting it, so I, I sprayed a decent amount of lighter fluid on it, and I went to go get my pack of matches, which I had set on top of the dry table, mm-hmm. and the matches were wet. Like, the, the cardboard matchbox, like, crumbled in my hand, <laughs> and, like... I had some newspaper there to also, like, use as fire kindling, and the newspaper was wet. And, like, I like my book, I brought a book to read while we were there. My book was damp. It was that humid. There was just water in the air. Like, I'm, I feel like you could drink it if you just breathed hard enough. Um, so that was fun. I don't... There are a couple things I miss about Wisconsin and about the Midwest... That's not one of them. 110% humidity somehow? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At this point in the year, it's like the same temperature there as it is here, but yeah, yeah, literally quadruple the humidity. Mm -hmm. It's been a bad summer. Usually it's like... It's not going to get better. (laughs) No, I know. Usually it's humid like the whole time, but like most of the days are in the 70s and, you know, low 80s and you'll have like a few days in the summer that like get into the 90s and it's been in the 90s as much as it's been in the 70s this summer it's been a it's been a bad one and yeah this is just the progression Get used to it yeah. yeah yeah about due for that to break right like second or third week of september i remember it usually cooling off yeah this this week is going to be better okay. i think and i'm about to break as long as we don't get like a weird heat wave which is always possible. Um, yeah. I mean, isn't Indian summer a thing? 
like Indian Indian summer so just like, means that like in October there's usually a week or two where it's like yeah, where it gets hot. Yeah, well, but not like not like middle of summer hot. It gets to be like in the seventies again. I don't know if it's ever gotten to the nineties in October. In my memory. I mean, there were a couple Halloweens, that both growing up, like, in college, where it's like, oh, uh, yeah, it's warm enough to dress a little no. slutty for Halloween. No, no, Here no. We go. There was, like, in, in, the, in the last, like, ten years, there's been, like, two Halloweens where it's like, oh, man, we can hang out outside this Halloween. And the other eight were like, it's 30. It's 30 degrees. And there's snow on the ground, usually. <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if the weather was actually condoning of dressing a little slutty, but that didn't stop anyone. (laughs) No, it did not. I think that that just, it had to happen. It was a requirement. We filled that requirement. Yeah, on both, on both, this, this was not bound by gender lines. No, but it, come on. If you got it, flaunt it. Let's go. Now's the time. Judgment free. Exactly. Yeah. When you dress as a soccer player, you wear long socks. That's the same as pants, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Got those legs. Show them off. God. (laughs) Sexy calves. We do have plenty to talk about this week in News of the Week. (laughs) Guys, we have to start a PlayStation 5 hunts all over again. A new model came out. Are you serious? Uh, A new model just dropped. Yeah. It has a better screw for when you put put the PlayStation 5 vertically. I don't know. My screw's been working. Yeah. It works. It's just so that you can screw it in with your hand. Yeah. Which, like... All right, people. You really not own a <laughs> screwdriver. Like, <laughs> that should not be a selling point. Also, it's lighter, though, so there might be something actually going on. Yeah, it is lighter, but that is at the expense of... Uh, it running a little hotter. I forget what the exact term is, but like the thing in it that absorbs or disperses heat. Heat sink? Heat sink, yes. Uh, there's less of it in the newer model than the base model. So, uh, I don't know. It feels like we're getting an inching closer to the problem the PlayStation 4 had. It was just hot as fuck and loud as a goddamn jet engine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. IGN's Palestinian aid article is back up with some even softer language. Damn, this again? Yeah. Yeah, that's a requirement. Mm hmm. It's yeah. sad. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how they made an already inoffensive article even more inoffensive, but they found a way. Hey, man. People are suffering. Would you like to help? Whoa, don't use such inflammatory language. I mean, basically, right? Like, Hey, man, people are suffering due to the effects of Hurricane Ida in Louisiana. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a pretty anti-hurricane article that you've got going there. People are suffering suffering everywhere equally. If you want yeah. to help some of them out, do it, maybe. Maybe some of them will even be in Palestine. Who knows? <laughs> yep. Give us money. We'll decide where it goes. Yeah. Don't give your money to Activision Blizzard, though, because in a lawsuit update... They're being accused of shredding evidence. Yeah, I saw that. That they were destroying human resources documents that probably contained all the complaints that were ignored. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. I don't... This is... This is like Wolf of Wall Street level bad shit. Like, what, what are you doing over there? What... What is this company that has defined video games in Western spaces for the past decade and a half doing? Isn't this just all companies, though? (laughs) Like, Kind of. Do you really expect a corporation to not destroy evidence at this point? I feel like it's almost 
they're at a competitive disadvantage if they don't destroy evidence in lawsuits. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because another, some other company is going to do it. Your Honor, our board members expected us to shred this evidence. Yeah. What, what were we supposed to do? We have an obligation to the shareholders yeah. to falsify and destroy evidence. If we don't do it, we're hurting them. If we don't do it, they'll sue us again. They're currently <laughs> suing us, but they'll put another one in there. Your Honor, have you checked our stock price lately? So what if I have three family members of, of jurors held at gunpoint at this very moment. I have to. It's my legal obligation. The FCC will fuck me if I don't do this. Sure, I can. Yeah, yeah. It's my fiduciary duty. (laughs) Like, I am am required. These, These people's financial interests are placed in my hands. I must commit manslaughter in order to fulfill my fiduciary duty. Um, if you could, if you intentionally commit manslaughter, is it still manslaughter? I don't know. I accidentally hit that man with my car on purpose. I'll just plead guilty to manslaughter. <laughs> that it is my fiduciary duty. That would be an interesting legal defense to play out in an actual courtroom. Just the defense admitting, yeah, my client's guilty of manslaughter. He shouldn't be on a murder trial right now, though. That's ridiculous. I mean, that's what they do a lot of the times mm-hmm. is, yeah, they plead down to yeah. manslaughter when they were charged with murder. And it's like, yeah, but those crimes don't work <laughs> together <laughs> because, yeah, there's a problem there. Mm-hmm. But it's also, yeah, it's basically Donald Trump's argument. From the Ukrainian phone call, like what Rudy Giuliani tried to mm-hmm. trot out at one point and then got laughed out of the fucking room where he was just like, sure, if he did it, he was just doing it because he needs to be reelected because that's the best interest of the United mm-hmm. States right now. He was doing like anything he does yeah. is, yeah, just for the good of the country. So it's all fine. He must break the law. Otherwise, the country will suffer. <laughs> Uh, so yeah i don't know i i feel like most corporations probably do this yeah maybe maybe i've watched too much too much uh succession oh is that coming back soon it is they don't have a premiere date but they're done with filming it's gotta be Mm. i feel like it's q1 q2 2020 2022 i mean there we go. I was going to say, oh boy. Got a lot of... 2020, we, miss, we missed a lot. <laughs> God, 2022 is going to be such a mouthful of a year. Yeah, I don't like it. 2027. 2027. What do you mm, guys wait till like... an extra sim- syllable. 2044. 2444. <laughs> well, 4, make 44, it. 4444. <laughs> 4444. 44. In the year 252525. 25, 25. It hasn't any... been that year in 20 years. <laughs> Are there any three syllable numbers? I don't know. I mean, I mean like I, mean, I guess if you Yeah, like 7777. Seven, seven, seven. Yeah. In the year 7777. Seven, seven, seven. Ooh. Hmm. Weird. Numbers are weird. Language is weird. And TV is weird. Uh, Ryan, do you want to take this one? Because I'm going to butcher that name. Uh, I think it's Maim Bialik. Um, yeah, she's from The Big Bang Theory and the new show Call Me Cat. And also is like a scientist, like a bona fide PhD scientist, mm-hmm. uh, is going to take over for um, ousted host after one episode was it mike richards is that that dude's name yeah uh in the for the for the meantime she was going to do just the prime time specials of jeopardy but yeah now i guess she's gonna do all of it for the time being mm-hmm. uh yeah no she's she's, she's got, weird she has some interesting <laughs> she's weird too i love how you put anti-c-section I wouldn't even qualify it as that. I would say she's anti-children born via C-section. Like, she thinks they all should have died. Fuck. She thinks C-sections are unnatural and children 
who need to be delivered via C-section should have just been allowed to die, basically. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty fucking wild, man. To say nothing of the health of the mother delivering them. I've never heard that opinion before in my entire life. Right? That's a that's a weird one, right? Like that's that's not anti-vax or anything. That, like which she has too potentially. Right, right. But like holy fuck, that's some weird one shit going on. There's also some stuff in here that I'm seeing that I don't know if we want to get into it in the podcast, but uh described herself as uh vehemently pro Zionist mm-hmm. and uh, voiced her support for the Israeli sediment settlements specifically in yeah. Palestine. No, she's mm-hmm. she's not just like a centrist and kind yeah, of old no, she's like, no, this it. is no, good. This is a good thing. She's like Benjamin Netanyahu's biggest supporter. Like she's like she's a bona fide BB voter. <laughs> she blamed Harvey wild. Weinstein's victims for the, their sexual assaults. <laughs> That that one was definitely a little bit out of context. I'm willing to okay. give her that one. You, you reading into that one, it's definitely like a a bit more gray than it's been reported on. But yeah, no, like <laughs> it's hard to blame reporters because it is hard to give her the benefit mm-hmm. of the doubt. Right. She's got some weird, some weird ass opinions. <laughs> she. Yeah, good thing she's a scientist. She's just inventing new opinions. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. God, Andrew, your face right now. People at home can't see yeah, it. Yeah, no, I'm just... just making my way through this. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> this person's yeah, she's awful. A, she's a snake oil salesman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's got, she's got a lot of stuff going on. But, like, I don't know. <laughs> she's been in the public eye for a long time and no one's ever said anything before. So it's hard to blame Jeopardy. <laughs> right. <laughs> because it sounds like there have she's... been plenty of people that have said things before. She just hasn't been famous enough to like fully. Ah. She was on the biggest show on the planet. I, I as, for, like, I forgot about that. The fourth lead. And then recently had her own sitcom. Like she's definitely <laughs> actually famous and no one ever really cared until now so i think mm, yeah i think ironically because of covid like and like the anti-vaxxer movement just going gangbusters because of that i I think people are now a little more we're gonna call people out on their bullshit she she was able to fly under her under the radar with this stuff coming up in the mid 2010s when people just thought celebrities were weird but yeah this this shit ain't kosher She is anymore. also explicitly in favor of the COVID vaccine. Right. Mm-hmm. That is to her credit. I mean, that's something, I guess. Yeah. Like, I, I really don't like anti-vaxxers, but COVID anti-vaxxers are a special breed right about now. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's it feels like a little bit more imminent. Like, yeah, sure, all these people not giving their kids measles shots is really bad, too. But, like, there is a more one of these pressing things issue. is really fucking me up. <laughs> So, no, I, I'm gonna go ahead and be a little bit more mad about the second one. No, she specifically just has beef with the rubella vaccine or some <laughs> shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. But actually, right, but. <laughs> you and I know from H Bomber Guy's video, Ryan, that that's a legit yeah, thing measles. for some reason. Yeah. What? A, yeah. No. It's, I okay. I so can't combine them. I don't know if. Um, I don't I don't want to like try to get into her psyche right now and say why she might be anti-vax in certain situations. Um but being anti like C-section saying that like the children should have been allowed to die, maybe she's just like super pro natural selection. So she's not anti-vaccine because she doesn't she trust them. Maybe she's just anti-vaccine because she thinks people that w- sh- would have died if they didn't get the vaccine should have died anyway. That's her explanation. Oh, okay. Yeah, basically. <laughs> we shouldn't that's, protect that's, the that human was her species. Explanation. We should. That was her explanation for the C-section, so I'm assuming, yeah, it's the exact same logic. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, like vaccines. Extrapolating from there. Maybe she's like, yeah. you know, I believe the science. I just think those people should die anyway. I don't... I, I don't know what... About, 
How does an umbilical cord being wrapped around a kid's neck mean they're genetically inferior to ones that don't? Because like, she's crazy. I, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it, it's the same thing. Why, why a kid who accidentally gets exposed to measles when they're eight, like, <laughs> should deserve to die yeah. for it? Like, yeah, no, it's fucking batshit insane. It has nothing to do with natural selection. Mm-hmm. Like, But... If you just subscribe to some generic concept of survival of the fittest, which isn't even true, mm-hmm. like survival of the fittest is just literally not how evolution works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, yeah, especially for us where we we didn't get where we are because the strongest survived. We got where we are because we found out how to use fire and tools. Like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm. We got where we are because we ate a fucking mushroom at one point and it gained consciousness. Greatly expanded our frontal cortex and our like rational thought processes. And then we were like, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> this shit's wild. Hey man, you gotta try this mushroom. I think I just invented language because of it. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, 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 he's speaking Dude, full sentences. Grunting. Yo, bro, check this yeah. out. No idea what Dude. you're fucking saying. Dude, come through this shit, Mad Liddy. And then the other caveman just Google. And then we somehow evolved language to like, I doth proclaim uh, this fungus is positively divine. And then we walked it back a little now, bit. Now we're back yeah. to like, we're like, we hey, took it too far. Yo, dog. It's just crazy, dude. <laughs> oh, uh, last but not least for news, and definitely some crazy stuff. OnlyFans now says it is suspending its plans to remove explicit content from its platform. However, they're still sus, and the damage is already done. Quite frankly, ah! <laughs> yo, they 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 really said fucking. Yo, 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 no, 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 no. You, you, You're getting this all you wrong. You heard us all wrong. Yeah, no, no. We're we're cool. You really think we'd be stupid enough to do that? Pfft. That means you're stupid for thinking so. <laughs> Laying down the Uno reverse card. Yeah. And the best part is because it's it's on fucking Twitter. So all the responses are OnlyFans models who are just <laughs> like, yay, come subscribe, baby. <laughs> Now we're good. And then just straight up porn, like in the Twitter <laughs> replies. Just literal straight up porn. I mean, I mm, I have seen a lot of dual, d- 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 people promoting dual platforms now, when previously it was the vast majority of people only had an OnlyFans. Um, and then also, the word suspended is doing a lot of work in in that announcement. Like we're not doing it now maybe we'll get rid of porn eventually but like we have heard you and we're not getting rid of it by october that's a more cynical reading but mm, well i mean i think fully some, shut that door. some people reached out to the banks that were supposedly causing some of those issues and the responses that those uh organizations were giving were we don't have a problem with it hmm? we've hmm. never like not worked with only fans before so then only fans had to kind of admit it was just a business decision. They decided they like, yeah. they wanted to pivot what they were doing. And then they had to be like, uh, I mean, never mind. It, mm. I've never thought to look into OnlyFans' marketing and, like, see... Because even the title, OnlyFans, is yeah. clearly, like, they're trying to pretend that they're not a porn site <laughs> like like no we're just oh no dude what come on now we're 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 premium content for people who really enjoy these creators like it's like, I, nah dude dude you have a little and, lock icon in the o that's like one of the most mainstream recognizable kink symbols out there like you know what's up i always just thought it had something to do with like security like Wait, are you talking about like the what are those things called? The the logo? 
No, when Lucas is talking about the kink. Yeah, wait, are you talking, are you about, talking like about like those cages and shit? Yeah, yeah, like the chastity cages. I think and it's shit. just supposed to be like their or... their content is locked up, like it's secure, and you have to pay oh. for it. I, I don't, I don't think that's supposed to be like a chastity belt. <laughs> I mean, it is a thing within the kink community that like if people are wearing like oh. a lock on a necklace, then it's like, oh, you're. <laughs> you're somebody's bottom you're a sub for somebody yeah no i'm i'm aware <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> that was like, my interpretation of that tips hat i'm aware no i'm i know all about what that community gets up to with locks <laughs> i'm just i'm not sure that only fans necessarily because oh. like i'm this is the most vanilla shit most of it is like yeah just like singers and photographers like they really think that's the platform that they could have and that they could survive and be as big as they are based on that like international dj uh oh this person's a a, a bodybuilder and they share their progress and uh, this person and then like, they jerk off on screen no they don't <laughs> that's the thing like they're they're fine they're cherry picking <laughs> The like oh, dozen oh, these people. These are real yeah. creators. Yeah, okay. yeah. They're they're cherry picking the like dozen people that aren't doing porn on OnlyFans, <laughs> and I want to look in. I want to like see if anyone's looked at their banner on Twitter and like analyze to see how many of those people are not, yeah, adult stars. Because <laughs> yeah, definitely plenty of them are like clearly artists or something else, and not yeah, just doing nudity <laughs> so but I've, I've never thought to look into this and i'm kind of loving it i would shock either of you if i were to say that justin roiland follows only fans on twitter no wait Isn't he like, like literally besties with a bunch of porn stars also yeah. why would he follow the twitter account only fans andrew you know why you know why? No, I'm that. saying like, wouldn't he just then follow like the creators? Like what? Because according to Ryan, there's nothing worth seeing on the OnlyFans Twitter page. No, I found someone that they finally. Oh, okay. She was an ex Bachelor in Paradise star. It says, "All hail Queen Victoria Larson, entrepreneur, model, and health and beauty advocate." Which what the fuck? Hold on. <laughs> she's a beauty advocate. She, she she's in an MLM. I, That's what that means. She, I, she's in a fucking pyramid scheme. Oh, I pictured a beauty advocate as in like she fights for hot people rights. <laughs> like she's, <laughs> she's like, no, you don't understand. Attractive people are human. <laughs> like, um, has just joined us on OnlyFans. The Bachelor in Paradise star is so excited to connect with her fans. And she's like on her knees in a bikini. And she's like, I'm so excited to do it. <laughs> like clearly. Oh. Yeah. But like she's quote unquote legitimate because she was on a reality show, I guess. So they're willing to promote her. Mm. But yeah. yeah. I, I assume that what that means is that she sells weird like weight loss and fitness supplements. You know, that that kind of shit. Yeah, that's what she sells. She can sell more than one thing. Yeah. She can have a side hustle. Yeah. No, this, this is interesting. Comedian and business owner. Hmm. Yeah, they really, they really do. I'm telling you. I don't know. They have a rising stars section. Do you think that's... Who's on that? <laughs> How curated Why? is it? Yeah, exactly. Because shouldn't it be like the three actual famous women that joined and blew up the site? Like, those should be the only rising stars ever. Mm -hmm. How do we always get back here? How do we always end up talking about OnlyFans? It's fucking interesting. It is, it is yeah. interesting. It is honestly like kind of just wacky. feel like we're i don't know and granted it's our age group but i feel like within the course of even our lifetimes public attitude by and large has changed towards pornography and it's weird yeah. and like maybe maybe that's millennials coming into power maybe that's boomers being relegated increasingly to irrelevancy at least on social issues but yeah that's where we're at 
Yeah, boomers hate porn. Right? Fucking <laughs> not. Jesus Christ. Everyone watches <laughs> porn. Yeah. Except for me. The, that's... I don't. I'm better than that. <laughs> you are a Sigma male. <laughs> yeah, no, famous Sigma male, Andrew Clark. Yeah. Uh, for those not in the know, that's the name of Andrew's fantasy football team this year. But what's the deal with Sigma, Sigma male? Is that just like we had to? Have, oh my god, we had god. to have talked Lucas, about this. Have, There's no way we didn't talk about this. Come on. You have not heard of Sigma males? Is that just like don't nut and then get superpowers? No. No, no, no. no. Uh, so, oh, oh my god, dude. You are about to... You've heard of the term alpha. Yeah. And you've heard of the term beta. Yeah. Well, what if I told you <laughs> that there's an even cooler... This dude. is what happens when you go <laughs> even further beyond... <laughs> Thank you for that, Andrew. Thank Al- you for that. <laughs> Alphas are all douchey chads that just are big and strong, so they get women that way. And betas are little bitches that never get any women. Sigmas get all the women because they're super fucking cool and individualistic. John Wick, Sigma <laughs> male. Yeah, they don't. Stinson, they don't. <laughs> Sigma male. <laughs> they don't play by the rules. They don't have friends they don't <laughs> you know what they, they do don't have? go to parties they have the grind lucas mm. yeah. it's they just everyone fucking knows who they are the minute they step in the room that's a goddamn sigma male and all the women are like holy shit fuck all the alphas and obviously you know betas are irrelevant sigma it, so it's it's weird. Yeah, it's, no, it's, it's, fucking it's fucking real weird. Wild. I thought the alpha and beta shit was pretty weird. Um, like adding this extra layer. Okay. Is so Six wild. signs that you are a sigma male. You enjoy being alone. You like to <laughs> think. You think independently. You don't like authority. You'd rather keep silent. You win by not playing. You're an incel. Yeah, I was about to say, this sounds like something li- uh, libertarians working in IT departments came up with to feel better about themselves. No, like, the yeah. Sigma male is exactly what I was recently complaining about with, like, Japanese manga and anime. Uh-huh. Where, like, it's the dude that gets all the women, even though he's a fucking loser. Yeah. Incel, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, but he's still get because it's like a, it's, a, a, it's imaginary. Mm-hmm. Like, it, of course it doesn't exist. It's not like a real thing so yeah it's it's what all the loners who sit in their parents basement and go on fucking eight chan yeah and and do all that shit think like they could be with enough work like it's as big it's as big while you were having premarital sex i studied the blade <laughs> yeah. energy <laughs> yeah it's the exact fucking thing they play by their their own rules like they're literally oh man i don't care what other people think and that's why I'm so beloved mm-hmm. by everyone. Like, it's just, it's such fucking bullshit. You people like, sit in your little social circles at the, in the cafeteria. I, a Sigma male, brought my lunch tray up to the library. <laughs> <laughs> and I ate with the librarian. Yeah. And I played and Yu-Gi-Oh some... cards. <laughs> and then... The hottest girl in school walked past the library and said, wow, he's really cool and down to earth. He's hanging out with librarians and just started absolutely fawning over me and couldn't resist my natural charms. Whereas the alphas are just tryhards who are hit. They have to like hit on girls and go to the gym and shit. (laughs) I like the quiet admission in this structure that... Like, these people are aware that they're not alphas. So they have to make lunch, up Which is also else. bullshit. Yeah. 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 Yes. Mm-hmm. These but, people are betas who are in denial. Yeah. By their own definition. Because alpha and beta is such fucking bullshit. Right. By their own definitions, though, they are a beta. Mm-hmm. Who just really even, thinks that they're not. Even I don't know if they would even be a, a beta by their own standards. Because they're like, I don't. They're, they're still not like, oh, and I 
treat women well and I'm subservient or whatever the fuck they think like betas are it's it's except for they are yeah Yeah. have you ever run into one of those like people who thinks they're like super cool and confident and like hate women and shit like that but then yeah when they get around an actual woman they are like remarkably like oh Uh, yes absolutely mm -hmm. oh of course Um, because they have no fucking idea how to act because they because they're alone all the time (laughs) they've alienized half of the fucking species right they're pieces of literal dog shit like so yeah, they are. They do actually behave like betas in their own yeah twisted ideology when they actually do like mm-hmm. interact with women. They don't like go like huh, fucking typical woman or like yeah like be demeaning and shit. Like they are like shitty that way. Say what you will about people that are self-proclaimed alpha males, but at least they like being around women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They might not think they're people, yeah, but they, they definitely... They, they might not treat them well, <laughs> but at least they don't think of them as another fucking species. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus so yeah, that's what a sigma male is, Lucas. I'm so glad we got to have this conversation. <laughs> Just I, a sigma male primer. I, I think that's the name of the episode, sigma male primer. <laughs> Good fucking God. Also, like, one last thing I'm going to say about this. I know that we know it's all bullshit, you know, how, like, yeah. you know, the term alpha and beta came from, like, people studying wolves, and it turned out that they were just way the fuck off on, like, what yes. they thought they was They were studying on. wolves in captivity, yeah. right. no, no, they, not wolves in the wild. They weren't studying wolves in, that, in captivity. What they, the whole idea of an alpha male wolf was that you could see that there was always one wolf ahead of the pack, like, they would walk in a straight line, like a, a single file line, and there'd be one wolf that was significantly farther ahead than the other that was, like, the the leader, quote-unquote, the leader, and they're like, oh, that must be, like, the strongest, coolest wolf that gets all the wolf pussy um, <laughs> and is the m- biggest, baddest hunter. But then they just couldn't realize that the wolves were constantly switching out, that they just always had one wolf farther ahead to, like, keep an eye out. And it was never one particular wolf. So that that's how that all got fucked up. Sigma males are not a thing that anyone ever made up in the wild with animals. Because that would be a wolf that just ran around on its own. And died. And died. <laughs> yeah, died of starvation. <laughs> but yeah, in their twisted fucking minds, no, that Sigma male actually ate more food and, than the pack and fucked because more they thought for bitches. themselves yeah <laughs> even like, though there was like, never any yeah. wolf bitches around what you're talking about with like john wick that is yeah like a an example of what they use but that's the thing about john wick is that he do, he could not physically exist in the real world mm-hmm. right like, it's, you cannot just take on an army as one person mm-hmm. like you would you just die, mm. like, a lot. Also, like, it, In the movie, you would have died dozens of times in those shootouts. I, John Wick is doing, like, I know this is toxic, but for the sake of the example, John Wick is doing, like, beta shit in that movie. He just wants to be left alone and sad for a while and, and like, cry about his wife dying. <laughs> like, I don't know if that's beta shit, but sure. <laughs> Is depression beta shit? Uh, According to... Ryan, you know the answer yeah. to that. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> oh, I was like, God. all his friends are around and like, hey man, if you need somebody to talk to, we're like right here. We you we can be your support network. You can go to therapy. That's fine. Like, yeah. Nah, whatever. That sounds like beta shit. <laughs> therapy... Willem Dafoe, great friend in that movie. Yeah. Therapy? Haven't heard of her. I don't know. Hey. Tom Cruise told me therapy was bad. Tom Cruise says my thetans are out of control. And that I must lead the world in a new world order <laughs> in this weird orientation video that leaked to the public. <laughs> it's a light novel. That's a manga or light novel title right there. Help me, Tom Cruise. <laughs> Use your magic. Help me, Jewish God. <laughs> oh, shit, I never got that was a Scientology yeah, joke Cruise until right yeah. magic. To oh. No, that's funny. No, I don't think he was saying Tom Cruise uses his magic, wasn't it? 
I think it was saying someone else uses magic, but I never got why Tom Cruise was in there with mm-hmm. Allah and God and Jewish God. I mean, oh, he, yeah, he said because, Oprah too. Yeah, he did say. I Oprah, think I think sure. he said Tom Cruise use her magic to save me. I, I I always thought that was a Scientology reference. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. Now I'm definitely getting that it's a uh, a fucking Scientology <laughs> yeah. reference. I thought he was just yeah naming random people. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, no, Tom Cruise, use your witchcraft to get your fire off me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is a boldly anti-Scientology uh-huh. stance from Will Ferrell. Yeah. Oh. And uh, fucking Adam, Adam, what's his name? Uh, uh. God, what is that? Adam McKay. Yeah. That's that. In Hollywood, to go that hard against Scientology, that's pretty fucking bold. <laughs> All right. I... I can't think of a better way to, tr- to transition into a quick little break. And then the memes or the breakouts. Let's go. Or leave it. Leave me admitting to the fact that I did not listen to a <laughs> word that you had said before. It's okay. Scientology slander was happening. That's that's a fair yeah, distraction. I was, I, was, I was reading quotes. <laughs> if you don't true big red, then fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a great movie. Uh, any memes going on this week? The fucking milk crate challenge blew up, yeah. boys. Yeah. Like you heard it here first, immediately on the voluntary viewing podcast. Immediately after I beat everyone that. to the it was goddamn punch, all over baby. the place. Yep, that shit absolutely took off. Mm. I felt I felt very good about that. I was like, I was like ground floor in this shit. I haven't been this on top of something since uh, fucking Gangnam Style when I watched that video with like 100,000 views. <laughs> oh, God. Ryan's claim to yeah. fame. I mean, what? I, I do feel like, yeah. Genuinely, I, I, was, I was ahead of the curve there. It's got 4 billion views nowadays. Could you tell? Could you tell when it was in the 100K that this was going to be it? I thought it was fun. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I think it was on a Rage comic on reddit because i was of course reading rage comics because yeah. it was a fucking cringy ass right 14 year old or whatever and was just like you can just say 14 people, year old yeah sure <laughs> all 14 year olds are cringy yeah and they were they were just like lay me listening to gangnam style just like what is this and then me two minutes later just like Woo, this shit's great and i was like what is gangnam style and i looked it up and i'm like oh yeah that's it's fun it's catchy i guess hmm. Didn't really think about it, and then all of a sudden, I just on the radio was like, "What the? F- this is a song that I listened to on the internet, and it was a random Korean song like a I, year ago, and now it's apparently the biggest thing in the world." We okay, can, Gen Z out there, if you're listening, back in 2013, stuff you saw on the internet didn't happen in the world. Like that's not that's not how that worked. You went on a very obscure, like, subreddit or website to see some memes, and that's the only place you would see them. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter would spit in your face if you tried to post a meme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Twitter was for daily updates and news. Yeah. Yeah. Twitter was for your fucking pontifications about uh, the legitimacy of waffles versus pancakes. Like... And then fucking Instagram didn't exist, and Facebook was still cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's how long ago this shit was. Twitter was where you went to argue about whether or not pirates or ninjas were cooler for some reason. And no. Facebook is where you went to do challenges. Flex on your homies. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook is where you went to uh, hit on girls and flex on all your homies. Just because it was the actual place where things were happening. Just constantly scrolling through people's relationship status to see if girls were single or not. <laughs> yep. And then Snapchat was where huh? you got to see who was cheating on your <laughs> girlfriend. <laughs> because best friends existed. Which was the greatest fucking social media feature that probably caused the most physical pain yep. <laughs> yeah. of any social media feature. At least in our era. Yeah. Holy fuck, man. That shit was so wild. All the excuses. 
<laughs> that had to be made up for why. No, dude, it's like glitching out. Like we like snapped once, like to say happy birthday, and now she's like my like number two best friend. Like I don't, I don't know, man. That should that I don't think it's working. Like, bro, you got to snap me like a hundred times right now. <laughs> yeah, that was a real thing. <laughs> Yo, dude, I don't, <laughs> I don't want her knowing that I. Snapchatted this girl thirty thousand times in the last month. Yeah. You need to send me Snapchats all day long, literally all day long. I don't care what they are. And you couldn't do texts or anything, so they had to. You had to take pictures every single time you wanted to yep. send a message to someone. God, half the time it was just black screens. I forgot that. I forgot yeah. you couldn't always send text through Snapchat. There was no chat. No. You had Jesus to actually take Christ. pictures. I, I remember for a little bit on Snapchat, what people would do was they would set their, like, disappear time to, like, infinite. And then they mm-hmm. would use their finger to scrawl a message on the screen mm-hmm. and then send it. Yeah. And it would take forever. And at a certain mm-hmm. point... I'm like, uh, maybe it's worth it to not be able to delete a text message. <laughs> <laughs> I, Yeah, Zoomers, also, if you're listening, it used to just be one line in Snapchat, mm-hmm. just one line of text. That was it. And it had to be so on top got... of an image. You had mm-hmm. to take a picture, and then you could put a caption with it. So it would just be a black screen, and then yeah. a yeah, single black sentence. screen. Yeah, with, like, some emojis. And if you're asking why we didn't just text, good question. <laughs> Fair. No, no, no. Honestly. Yeah. It's not a good question. You know why. It's so that the message would disappear and no one could see it. I mean, that was with, like, mm, yeah, maybe I'm outing myself as a lamer high schooler, but that was with, like, maybe half a dozen people you didn't want that stuff sticking around everyone else casual conversation friend conversations like what were we do we were dumb i definitely did not snap guys yeah ever. lucas am uh, i weird you and i did not send like text-based messages on snapchat to each other you and i texted yeah. i don't think in my entire life I mean, maybe once or twice. I don't know if I've ever sent a Snapchat to a man my age. <laughs> like, I think my dad, maybe a couple times, like, I, he would send me a snap and I'd respond. But, like, yeah, I don't think a single guy in my age group, a single peer who was a man, uh-huh. did I ever send a snap to. That, that, like, I feel like unironically... I mean, ironically now, but in hindsight, unironically, that would be like, oh, yeah, you're gay. Like, yeah, you know, Ryan's very insecure of his masculinity. Rules. He's just I mean, I just wouldn't do it. There was no reason. I didn't to. want to be like gay. You said, the text messages work like there was no reason to. Snapchats were literally just so, yeah, you could send pictures of yourself to other people. Like, why does a guy need to send a picture? To another guy in high school. Like, yeah, no, absolutely. Let your homie know what you're doing. Of... Let, let your bros know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't think I sent many text messages to guys that weren't, yeah, like utilitarian. Like, <laughs> hey, are you going to be at the practice field at four? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think I sent many texts. Like, hey, bro, what's the haps? <laughs> like, <laughs> that sounds weird, too, a little bit, to be honest. Not... Maybe I didn't have good friendships, but... <laughs> I check in with my boys. No, you just hop on Call of Duty Black Ops 1. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get in the, get, see the five people that are online. Get in a massive party that's so big that you have to play Ground War because six people, you can't have six people. Uh, you'd have to kick someone out for that. Mm. Yeah. I think we're in the Wild breakouts man. now. <laughs> um, 2011 was a different time. Breakouts. Black Ops 1. Uh, uh, we got to get back on Black Ops 1. <laughs> They're going to shut down the servers someday. And I'm going to be very sad if all the Black Ops 1 people that I used to play with don't hop in. Mm. Although COD 4 servers are still online. So it's got it's got some time. 
Um, I got two breakouts in here. The one is maybe a group chat. Uh, how do how do we want to do this, gang? Does anybody have a hot topic they want to go for? All right then. I beat Resident Evil Village. I think the last thing I said about it on this title was that I was in the middle of Heisenberg's factory mm-hmm. and <coughs> Miranda was Mia for how long? The, the, the main villain in this game, Ryan, has mystique from X-Men powers. She's a shapeshifter. She was just Ethan's wife for a while. We're not it doesn't get into the logistics of that, but it's fucked up. It's weird. Yeah. What? So she wasn't kidnapped? She was just actually the villain? No, no, no. She was kidnapped in, in the first game. Yeah. And then some yeah, but some even time, then? No, sometime yeah. after that, in the three years in between those two games, at some point she was kidnapped again by Miranda, who is the antagonist of resident evil village held captive and miranda took her place and shapeshifted to look like her which i just now realize is super weird because her goal was only ever to kidnap rose their baby she didn't you know, yeah, there's no, no reason, no reason to not kidnap. just take her right yeah, away it's an infant <laughs> if anything you are setting yourself up Every second you're in that house, you have a chance of revealing yourself. Like, Ethan could have been like, hey, babe, you didn't stick your finger in my ass to make me finish. Like, what's wrong? And then the jig's up. Like, I... (laughs) Why? No, no, she... I think you hit the nail on the head, and she just wanted Ethan Winters real bad. (laughs) She was down bad for Ethan Winters on top of wanting to kidnap their kid. Why do madmen do what they do? (laughs) I... This is jumping around a little bit, but uh, I can see why they want. E- she wanted Ethan Winters so bad, because this game goes out of its way to say how special he is, a lot, and like verbatim, like you're special. Saying. Yeah, uh, and it turns out he's special because he died, like right away at the start of Resident Evil Seven. He's been dead the whole time. Like, yeah. And j- the mold, the the plot device mold has been keeping him alive somehow. He's a, and then he's in a this mold game, zombie, just like yeah, just like uh, the Baker family in the first game. And so then this game has a moment where like Ethan gets his heart ripped out of him, and it's like, oh shit, Ethan's dead. Nah, he's fine. But then he actually dies, and now it's like, I mean. So he's going to probably come back in Resident Evil 9, right? Somehow? Probably. Probably. It's weird. Uh, circling back. Love the ex- love the sequence where Ethan hops in basically a tank. A metal tank to kill Heisenberg, who has stopped doing Magneto shit and is now just a monster. But, but he can't control the tank. Because it's made out of a special polymer that he can't control, but Heisenberg made the tank, and like Heisenberg, why would he invent? No, he did. No, Chris Redfield said that he made the tank. No, I I think he said like, yeah, we fixed up this old piece of junk that Heisenberg left around, and like, oh, yeah, but no, that would have made sense actually. That that would have worked. That's like, yeah, we invented the thing that can kill him. Instead of he invented the thing that can kill him. <laughs> also, yeah, he, can, uh, he can control it because didn't he lift it up and like throw you in the air or some shit? Yeah. He, he just did it, didn't do it the whole time. Uh, video games. Video games. Um, they're dumb, but also, holy fucking shit, they let you play as Chris Redfield sometimes, and that was fantastic. Yeah, that was pretty fun. That, like, it... And it's also a great way to get you past the part of, like, the horror game where it's, like, you have a shit ton of ammo and just need to kill a bunch of monsters now mm-hmm. by making you play as a different guy whose whole deal is that he has a shit ton of ammo and is really good at killing monsters. Mm-hmm. That was fun. 
Yeah, they're like, oh, we set up this whole thing where they're like, oh man, there's this giant army with like hundreds of these werewolf things. There's no way they can do this without having just like a cruise missile strike in the middle of them. Mm-hmm. Or Chris Redfield, the human equivalent of a cruise missile. Yeah. What does Heisenberg call him? That boulder punching asshole or something? Oh yeah, he did, he does reference the thing in Resident Evil Five where Chris Redfield punches a boulder out of the way. Yeah. Um. Uh, this game has a pretty good cr- post credit sequence where uh, Ethan and Mia's daughter Rose is teed up as the next protagonist. Um. Which I really am looking forward to. More women protagonists in video games, yay. Even though Resident Evil kind of got in on the forefront of that shit. Uh, Is that 15 years later, Andrew? Or does Rose age fast like Evelyn? Um, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know how old she was. I mean, I assume she was supposed to be like a couple of months old. Mm -hmm. Like when she got kidnapped so like i don't know if this was like like yeah 10 or 15 years in the future or yeah or what um i do know that in that last shot where she's in the car and the car is driving away you can Mm -hmm. see like a figure in the distance yeah people like broke the game and zoomed in on it and it's it is just the character model of Ethan Winters. I, but, like, exactly I, the same as he was at the end of the game with, like, the sweatshirt and the wrapped-up hand and yeah. that sort of thing. So, I don't know. Well, that's like Fallout 3, right? Where they made the, the they didn't know how to make the train move. Mm-hmm. So they just made a dude with a train head and he, like, walked. <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty fucking hilarious when they like zoom out on the character model and yeah, it's just it's legs and a torso underground. That's so and funny. And a giant train car head. Holy and it just shit. It, it worked. Like it fucking worked. That's baby. so funny. I I yeah, they probably did just go with our efficiency's sake, just a model in there that's not that doesn't look like Chris Redfield from a distance. So they went with Ethan because. They had it on It's either him or Heisenberg, and it can't be Heisenberg. Uh, actually, yeah, we never see Heisenberg without the hat. That's weird. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. What is this? Holy shit. Train head guy. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> oh. That looks like oh, one of geez. Heisenberg's creations. Yeah. <laughs> um... I also if Ethan does show up in the ninth game, which I'm confident is gonna happen, that'll be weird. That'll be weird that Rose will see his face for the first time as an adult in her memory, see his face for the first time. And then we as the audience, it's gonna be the same thing. Mm-hmm. What if they don't though? What if, what if just you don't actually play as Evelyn and you just go back to being super milk toast Ethan Winters? I Sure. Also, like they they did give his character model a face. Oh, okay. And so, like when they zoomed in on his character model, it is just it may as well have been blinking white guy, video game protagonist. Yeah, yeah, just like a very plain face with blonde hair. That's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, last but not least, I don't think this game has very cohesive themes. Um, Especially compared to the last one, which I felt was, like, a very potent, like, these. this game is about the anxieties of a 30-something about to plunge into a relationship, about to start a family, or commit to a relationship about to start a family, and, like, here, here is a terrible family that represents all of the anxieties with that, and, oh, hey, there's also a new younger woman who's kind of into you that's, like, maybe an option... I felt like, like those pieces were there a bit, but Resident Evil 8, I don't know if there's more of a message other than, yeah, this game is about the anxieties of, here's everything that can go wrong in a family. Like, I, what if one of the kids is Heisenberg and just hates you? Or, 
is fucked up like Moreau or uh, Beneviento. No. I feel like there weren't enough uh, Dom Toretto Resident Evil crossover memes. <laughs> they happen too far apart. You know, if the pandemic wasn't a thing and Fast Fast 9 came out when it was supposed to, we would have gotten a chance. It could have, it, it would have happened, but no. Too much time. Too much internet time. All right, I have another thing I'm prepared to talk about at length. One of you guys go in between me, please. Um, psh, fucking been watching Hard Knocks. Okay. Yeah, I finished the third episode yesterday. This is pretty good. You know, yeah. like it, it get some insight into teams. The reason I watched the most recent episode was because CD Lamb is on the COVID protocols, but they don't talk about it. So it must have happened after mm. their most recent preseason game. Um, yeah, I don't know. What else? What else is going on? We what we do in the shadows comes back. Are we doing a watch party for that? Oh That's fuck Thursday, yeah, we're doing right? a watch party. This Thursday, we're doing the shadows, baby. Wait, do you have FX? Maybe I have Hulu. Oh yeah, it'll be on. Uh, mm, right? They might do that on a delay. They, they say like FX on Hulu on a lot of the billboards. Yeah, all right. So we should be fine. Yeah. I'm going to give it a shot. Mm. Um, and then, yeah, Rick and Morty finale is this weekend, this right? This Sunday, I think. Yeah. So. So. Yeah, it'll be fun. I have something. Bring oh, it. Boy. I have to admit something to the two of you. Oh, no. There's a side of me that you weren't aware of over these last... Oh, no. 18 months of the pandemic. I got a preview of this. Oh, boy. So, at at very early on in the pandemic, Jade started watching Gilmore Girls. And very shortly afterwards, through osmosis, when I was like, oh, man, I'm a big stuck-up stuck dude, fucking lame-ass Gilmore Girls, making fun of it, I realized... That's fun. This show fucking sucks. Not so much that, like, the show is, like, awful, and it is not good, but, like, the every single character in the show is terrible. And again, I don't mean that in the general sense of, like, they're terribly written or it's just, you know, whatever. I hate every one of them. <laughs> every main character of Gilmore Girls is terrible, insufferable, and otherwise despicable. And last week, Jade and I finished season seven of Gilmore Girls and then watched Gilmore Girls A Year in a Life, the four part special yeah. that came this, came out yeah. on Netflix like ten years after the show ended. Holy shit. I, it it was uh, it was a ride. It's not how I would recommend uh, spending eighteen months of the pandemic in terms of the show that you're watching with your girlfriend. But honestly, I enjoy hating things. I enjoy being angry. It fuels me. It it makes me feel alive. And I hate the Gilmore Girls. And I mean. The two, or I, the three titular Gilmore Girls. I hate them all. Mm. I enjoyed watching this show. And I complained about them so much. And Jay did the exact same thing. We watched this almost like in the opposite way that you and I would watch uh, Dragon Ball Z, Lucas. But also kind yeah. of the same. Yeah. It, w- it really sucked me in. In a way that like I don't feel good about. I was literally biting my knuckle because I'm so excited to talk to you about Gilmore Girls, Andrew. Um, What is the plot of the... This is how long ago this show came out. The WB would eventually become the CW hit Gilmore Girls. Is is that what what it it was on? Originally, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so basic concept is you have... uh, 
Lorelai Gilmore, a 30-something uh, single mom living in small town, I think it's Connecticut, like a, a ridiculously small psychopath town. <laughs> just, <laughs> just everyone there is insufferable. But, it, but like, ev- nobody acknowledges it. Everyone's like, oh, my God, this is great, including Lorelai Gilmore. She's not the straight man in this situation. She's very much the most chaotic of anyone there. Um, and then she's living with her teenage daughter, also named Lorelai Gilmore, goes by Rory. Uh, Lorelai had her when she was 16 um, and then moved away from her parents, who were like an exceedingly wealthy uh, like East Coast family that she didn't get along with. And so she moved away and like pulled herself up by her bootstraps and raised this kid on her own. And they have this super weird relationship where they're best friends and confidants and shit like that. It's super not healthy. <laughs> um, and then they live in this small town. Uh, Rory wants to go on to big school and do big school things. So her mom strikes a deal with her estranged family that she would visit them once a week and have dinner if they would pay for her kid's school. Okay. And then that's kind of the tension there. And then her mom is awful and they're super elitist. And everyone fucking sucks. And, like, uh, Lorelai and her daughter are always talking about how, like, bad healthy food is. And they don't exercise. And they, like, look down on literally everyone. And they, like, order Chinese food every single meal. And they drink, like, seven cups of coffee a day. And then, like, the the one straight man in the show is Luke, the owner of the diner, who's kind of like a grumpy old man, but, like, 30 and he, like, runs a diner and, like, serves people diner food, but he doesn't eat any of his own food, and he's, like, really into health food, but still serves people burgers. It's weird. Um, and then it's just, like, the drama of their everyday lives, dating, family shit, you know, whatever. She goes up, like, Rory goes off to college, dates dudes. Um, she breaks up a marriage because she has sex with her married ex-boyfriend like a bunch and then his wife finds out and they get divorced and it's her fault and then she just completely leaves that behind um dates this other dude who's a like a total piece of shit and then like treats him badly and it's it's weird and then goes off to college strings a bunch of dudes along ends up dating this super crazy rich dude um and then like breaks up with him like five times and then anyway like that goes on forever and the show ends with her getting a job to work on the obama campaign as like a journalist not not, like on the campaign but follow it as a journalist she graduates from college leaves goes off to do great things and then 10 years later a year in a life comes out this four-part miniseries and it's like oh rory actually never became successful she's just like a early 30s journalist not doing great but like doing okay um turns out she's having an affair with her also married like her other also married ex-boyfriend like the one that she dated in college she has a boyfriend and is cheating on him he is married and they're having an affair and it's just like a thing that they joke about in the show and it's like oh i forgot i forgot about my boyfriend da, 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 da. that's rory um and everyone's just like oh what a scamp going off having casual sex with people that are in long-term relationships it's whatever how how did this genre of tv persist when Gilmore Girls had its cake and ate it too. It successfully combined rich people drama and white trash drama into a single TV show that ran for seven seasons. That's it. Mm -hmm. We're done. They figured it out. Everybody go home. They nailed it. Mm -hmm. No more worlds to conquer. Well, I guess the the idea was that the writers wanted to finish the show after six seasons and the network wanted them to go on for season seven so they kicked the writers off the show did season seven which wasn't very well received 
And then the original writers did this miniseries to try to, like, end it in the way they wanted to. Um, the last thing I'm going to say about it, though, is that, like, these two Gilmore girls, Lorelai and Rory, are fucking awful. They're really stuck yeah. up. They're super awkward. They're not funny. They they cause a bunch of problems, and everyone is always fawning over them and talking about how great they are, and everyone's going to die to defend them and shit. And so these characters are presented as as the, you know, like the, not, not Mary Sue or what but just like you know the perfect character mm -hmm. that everyone loves and doesn't realize that at least in my eyes they're being shown as just fucking terrible people yeah i think because the function of the show is that like people who see themselves in these two characters are like maybe i'm not that bad after all yeah no there there's tons of there's tons of people that are like, oh my god, like, I identify with these characters so much. I'm such a Lorelai. And like, holy shit, you guys are not watching the same show. This is not like Rick. Yeah. It, yeah. From Rick and Moore. Like, all yeah. the people that are like, I'm Rick but Sanchez, it's, man. It's I'm, different, and though. And they don't realize that he's the biggest piece of shit yeah. but the sh in the here's, world. Here's the thing, though. That's different because the show is definitely showing Rick as a big piece of shit. And people are still looking past that and being like haha he's cool this show is trying to make these women seem amazing mm -hmm. and they just are not aware that they are also making them terrible and the audience is also ignoring the terrible parts and just being like oh my god they're great did gilmore girls invent girl bossing <laughs> it might have it might have. I, I need to email every entertainment outlet I have contacts for now. This There's something here. <laughs> Girl boss, verb. To make something or someone appear as a feminist idol or inspiration for profit, despite the numerous flaws of the person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. It's literally, yeah, the exact yeah. thing. Thank you for going down this rabbit hole, Andrew. Thank you for taking yeah. this deep dive into a cultural institution, honestly, that I just cannot mire into myself. And I did this with the knowledge that I want you guys to judge me for this. <laughs> I don't want to be remembered fondly. And I definitely chose to keep I'm... watching this show with Jade instead of the other 10 shows that I keep going like, oh, I should really watch that. I should really watch that. But instead it's just like, Ah, oh, we made dinner. You want to throw on Gilmore Girls? Sure. Andrew, honestly, you just became, like, not a better in terms of moral fiber, but in terms of value person to me after you said that. Andrew's like, guys, my mental health is really suffering. I'm having a rough go. Watches just absolute garbage TV that makes him hate the human race. I don't know what it could possibly be. <laughs> Oh boy! All right. Um, I I can't think of a transition off of Gilmore Girls. Honestly, uh, I'm playing No More Heroes three, which is the most No More Heroes game to come out this year, and therefore the best game to come out this year. Why is that, Lucas? Oh boy. So, the plot of this game is that now forty something. Anime nerd assassin, Travis Touchdown, living a quiet life, seemingly estranged from his wife and kids. We're not sure what's going on there, though. Uh, but then the planet is invaded by aliens, and it's essentially just... What if E.T. came back after 30 years with his prison buddies and decided they're gonna, they're gonna run shit? Um, and then, yeah, as you're playing through the game, you have to fight these aliens... Um, I've gotten through four boss fights so far. I, I've only actually fought two of the aliens, because, like, other characters, other assassins in the series show up and kill them before you can, and then you just have to fight those dudes. Like, there's one fantastic scene where 
This alien, after getting like a full-on build-up and introduction, is just standing in the middle of a city street, and Travis is like, oh my god, I can't, I can't sense anything from him. Is this like a zen thing? This could be one of my hardest fights ever. And then the dude's head just rolls off of his body, and the cyborg ninja shows up, and you fight that guy instead. I, it's kind this of, game is ridiculous. It's kind of funny. This game is everything it uh I, I, it it looks like no other video game i've ever played and i i know video games are kind of stagnant in terms of presentation but i i'm just digging it so far i, I will update update the listeners update you guys as i progress through the game thank you very much immaculate yeah um uh, yeah there are reviews out there that are like six out of tens, seven out of tens. I'm going to look up the Metacritic score, but like, yeah, exactly. This is a six or seven out of ten game, and it is fantastic. One last question before we sign off. Um, yeah. Wanted to send the poll out to the masses, i.e. you two. Um the next game I'm going to start playing once I finally get around to finishing uh, Metro Exodus is Ghosts of Tsushima, mm-hmm. uh, which just had its director's cut released along with the uh, expansion of the game. And uh, the director's cut offers, like, obviously, like, a bunch of, you know, like, graphical improvements and, like, gameplay stuff. And then, then there's the DLC... Um, and then there's a couple of language options. So you can play the game like dubbed or, uh, yeah, dubbed in Japanese, subbed or dubbed. um, <laughs> dubbed in Japanese instead of, uh, subbed yeah. in Japanese or, you know, whatever I'm, I'm phrasing it weird. Basically it allows you to like, yeah. you can listen to the game. It's voice acted in Japanese and like the, the like facial animation of the, the models are synced. Yes. To... Yes. Lucas. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry brain wasn't working um and then so you can like basically play the game in japanese that way i have the game i bought it for 30 dollars on sale like right before they announced that this was coming out is it worth it to pay the 30 dollars so that i can play it in the special modes and the dlc and then put it on my top tens list because if i don't pay the extra thirty dollars to like upgrade it to the director's cut version. It's just the PS4 version of the game that came out in twenty twenty. Wait, so what does this version do? The director's like, cut. Let's him put it so on the top to ten the, list, basically. I have to be the only voice of reason all the time <laughs> in this shit. What is this new version, and how is it actually? Different? It's it, it's like DLC. It's an expansion. And then also, like, obviously, like, the graphical stuff, like, 60 frames per second. And then also adds the Japanese. It counts! I think, okay, the director's cut definitely counts because there's literally, like, an extra 20 hours of the game added on as DLC. Like, a new story expansion. Not, like, not, like, cosmetic shit. We've, we've come to this detente where, yes, of course... That's going to be how it's going to have to be. If there's 20 hours of new content, mm-hmm. it's going to count on our list. But if this was, like, just me doing a podcast, no, that wouldn't... <laughs> like, it's not... It's not a game. Like, you're you're co- talking about DLC for a game that you keep didn't moving come out the this goalposts. year. Like, you definitely keep... Uh, because I have no, to. No, you don't. Because I literally you have to. You keep moving the fucking goalposts. Because otherwise, you guys would literally just put games from 1980 on this shit. And, like... Because you played them this year. Like, it has nothing to... That that was our first we, year. You don't remember no, okay, that? Yeah, that was like, our first year, and then we agreed not to do that. So... Yeah. So, so I have no choice but to move the goalposts, no, because that we, was where the goalposts were. We made were. a decision. We made a decision them. together. We all agreed. If there's, yeah. like, a, a remake or, like, an upgrade to the game that comes out, and all it is is just... Oh, it it boosts the frame rate and it improves the graphics or whatever. It moves into the next gen. That doesn't count. This is literally another like thirty percent of the game 
came out this yeah. year. No, I've I've never changed my own personal stance. I have acknowledged that we're not going to be able to go any farther because your guys' initial position was never that was never, was like, that was never a stance game, that you had. Is absolutely a stance, Lucas. That I had, is that this shit was not different enough, and like it has to be a game. Like the the main debate came around remakes and reboots. Like when when is a reboot or a remake a new game? And it was like it's got to be an actual remake where they basically change the entire game. And then DLC got worked in as like a, a flyer of like as long as it released new content in this year, it can go on this year's list. You were you were and def- I was just like no, whatever. you were not just whatever. You were de- that was, was your whatever. caveat. It's you can't just improve the graphics. Sure, if you have DLC and it has extra content, that's one mm-hmm. thing. That was definitely your was like. Not. That's good. That's not. where the goalpost was. No. That was the first down marker. It wasn't. I. It really wasn't. The goalpost was always, yeah, for remake versus reboot, it can't just be The Witcher 3 got ported over to Switch. It has to be like, no, they took this game, stripped it down, and made a brand that new was game never, that takes advantage of the new consoles thing. That was absolutely my stance. And then it got tacked on that, like, well, if the game adds new content. And I was just like, look, I'm not going to be able to win this because you guys are literally... No, because you was never the like, fight that you fought. Just have a different fought. conception. Yeah, exactly. I never fought that fight. So, right. so why really are you making a big it. deal out of it now? I'm not making a big deal about it. I'm saying in my personal podcast... This game wouldn't go on there, but I know it will, and like whatever, it clearly counts a hundred percent. This is gonna count if you pay thirty dollars. If we, but like, I just don't know. It doesn't make sense to me personally. If we let Persona Five Royale uh, in last year, I feel like no. Last year we had controversy. That's Hold true. On. That's fair. We can't use last year's definitions. Um, but then again, at the same time, Andrew. I want you to have a good time with this. I want you. To, I want the podcast, the top tens, to be the best they possibly can be. That being said, if I encourage you to do this, I'm giving up an advantageous position where I feel like I can just clinch video games 2021 right now. I'm not gonna have a video game. Yeah, um, yeah. No, I just realized Here's this. the thing. It's why, yeah, I, I've got Resident Evil Eight. Which I ha- um, I, I will too. Yeah. So we're already good there. Yeah. Um. I don't, I don't think anything else. Warzone came out with a new map. So I get to put Warzone on there again? Like, I don't fucking know. <laughs> yeah. I don't go, have go anything, ahead. man. Yeah, I'm not going to fight for it to be in the top 10. So, like, sure, it'll be on my fucking list. Because it's, like, the only game that qualifies. Minecraft came out with new DLC. I've played Minecraft this I year. Mean, but it wasn't... The, the games that I've played so far this year are, like, Stardew Valley... Madden, Metro Exodus, which came out like in I I think 2019. I'm just playing it on the PS5 now for the first time. And then and well, then is, will be Ghost of Tsushima. Was the Last of Us Madden? Oh sorry. Was the Last of Us Part Two this year, or am I getting that was last time year. dilation? It was last okay. year. No no no. Yeah no. I'm Madden, Last of Us Two, the first. Yeah no, those 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 are all all previous no, i know they're all last year uh the the first hour of fucking horizon <laughs> zero dawn um the first four hours of spider-man miles morales uh did i play spider-man this year i don't even remember uh probably not um yeah no it's i, I play no games man just, just playing madden and watching youtube videos <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how was the descent into uh, Left Two? By the way, nah, it's not fun. I, I yeah, don't watch it. It's depressing. <laughs> it's not entertaining enough. Yeah, like sure, it's informative and like mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes fun. I feel like H Bomber guy was the only one that I was like, all right, this guy's fun to watch. Like, yeah, no, I, it's just not entertaining enough to want for me to want to watch it. Like, you know, you can. You can only listen to a bunch of nerds talk about theory for so long, right? Like, now I'm getting a lot of recommendations for it, and I'm, yeah, noticing that I'm not clicking on them. So, oh, boy. there's something mm-hmm. in it for me. Fair. I forgot that I also played Control, but that also came out, like, two years ago. I, oh, my God. You got... <laughs> Here you go, everyone. Here are the games that are going to make up the bulk of our video games 
2021 list. Uh, Bug Snacks, Demon Souls, Bug Modern Snacks Hunter didn't World, come out this Cyber, year. Bug Snacks Cyber Shadow, Astro's Playroom, Destruction All Stars, Honey Pop Two, Astros Super Playroom Mario 3D World, Bravely Default Two. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Year Replicant, New Pokemon Horizon Snap, Zero. Final Fantasy VII Remake, these... Intergrade, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, Near Reincarnation, Resident Evil Village, No More Heroes 3. 90% of those games did not come out this Most year. Most of those games didn't come out this year. I got 10, I think. Cyber Shadow, <laughs> uh, Destruction, yeah. Mm. You played an hour of Destruction All Stars, which counts. counts. It counts. Oh, yeah, then it's on my list too. Fuck me. Yeah, I got 11. I'm good. I'm going to vet that shit. <laughs> We're not going to have a repeat of last year where we had to suss this out during the podcast. <laughs> we are going to air all the grievances before the Top 10s episode and hash it all out. Oh, that sounds like a, that sounds like a good intro episode, fuck. <laughs> the airing of grievances. All right, this episode is starting to go a little long. Thank you all so much for listening to the 154th episode of the Voluntary Viewing Podcast which will almost definitely be titled Sigma Male Primer. If you enjoyed what you heard, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, etc. Act the link in the description down below if you want to help a collection of great progressive causes. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok for highlight clips. Uh, support us on Patreon if you want to help. The, if you want to join the likes of the terrific Tiffany Cole, Sucky Badger, and Central Richard Nixon, you can also give us money directly through the Anchor Podcast platform. Follow us on Twitter for updates at V2 underscore podcast. Email us your questions and business opportunities, voluntaryviewing at gmail.com. And follow me at Lucas Ryder on Twitter to keep up with all of my writing. Brand new week ahead of us, everyone. Good luck with it.